Recessions have caused some of the worst market crashes in history, and the word itself is enough to instill fear and panic in people. So why did Warren Buffett, one of the wealthiest men in the world, hope to see many more of them? After studying him and other famous investors for years, now I know why, and I will explain it to you in this video. But first of all, is an economic recession really on the horizon? Is a market crash really coming? Probably what you're really interested in knowing is how to profit from a recession and a market crash. The last three years have been nothing short of chaotic. The illness has led us to the current economic situation, characterized by tight job constraints, exponential housing prices, rising costs of essential goods, international supply chain problems, economic instability, and record-breaking inflation. But what does all this lead to, especially when we talk about the United States? The current inflation rate is soaring through the roof. The Federal Reserve considers it to be too high and is planning to raise interest rates. This poses risks because adjusting interest rates requires a delicate balance, and if not done carefully, it can cause significant harm. First, we need to understand the two main impacts that interest rates can have on the global economy. Lowering interest rates makes borrowing money cheaper, increases spending, and accelerates the economy, which is what the Fed did during the closures. Raising interest rates, on the other hand, makes borrowing money more expensive, reduces spending, and slows down the economy. But if the economy is not ready for a change, increasing interest rates too quickly before the economy is ready could cause a chain reaction in the national and global economy. However, the Fed is certainly aware of this and will be very cautious about how to proceed. That being said, historically, the Fed has not always been the best at handling such situations. Listen, recessions do not just happen. So let's try to understand the definition of a recession. A recession occurs when the gross domestic product, GDP, decreases for two consecutive quarters. Another factor to understand is GDP, which is the total value of everything produced in a country in a given period. Therefore, we should take a closer look at GDP data, and fortunately, the recent data has been surprising. In the fourth quarter of 2021, the GDP for 2021 saw an impressive surge of 6.9%, ending the year with an annualized increase of 5.7% compared to 2020 when the GDP decreased by 3.4%. So, we're in good shape, right? Is there something they're hiding in these data on average, and it's here that it becomes really interesting? Most of the GDP was actually fueled by businesses thanks to inventory production, not necessarily by consumer demand. If we look at manufacturing sector data, we see new orders. But despite this, the growth of new orders is slowing significantly. In fact, Wall Street and savvy investors are becoming more pessimistic about how much the United States will grow in 2024. There's another thing that is commonly considered an indicator of a recession and has preceded US recessions over the past 50 years. I'm talking about a simple line called the yield curve, which shows what happens when you buy a US government bond. In particular, it shows the different interest rates you would get based on how long you intend to hold the bond. For example, if you hold the bond for five months or five years, the interest rate changes. Usually, you expect that the longer you hold the bond, the higher the interest rate will be. This is because the long term means more risk and uncertainty, making it more dangerous for the lender. It's dangerous when the yield curve starts to invert because when it inverts, the entire system can't function properly and it would mean you get a higher interest rate if you hold the bond for a shorter period of time, which doesn't make sense. This inversion occurs when investors are very pessimistic about the future and generally believe a recession is coming. But one thing needs to be clarified. No one knows when a recession or a market crash will happen, not even those with multiple degrees in economics or years of experience in finance. What I was interested in was how these individuals became rich during difficult times. So, I studied almost all the great investors, from Benjamin Graham to Warren Buffett. Now I know why Buffett hoped to see many recessions, and the reason can be summed up perfectly with this quote, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy 
when others are fearful. The legends who profited from the 2008 crash followed these strategies. Even though the stock market was down, home prices were falling and businesses were struggling and despite the savings collapse. If we dig deeper into the 2008 situation, we can see that the crash was just a small event in the grand scheme of things. Suppose you had invested $20,000 in the S&P 500 around 2007 before the economic crisis. If you had withdrawn your money when everyone else was doing it, around May 2008, you would have lost about 31% of your money, leaving you with only $13,800. But if you had implemented just a quarter of the strategies I'll reveal today, you would have almost $50,000. Making a profit during a market crash is easier said than done because, psychologically, when you see the market in the red, panic sets in and you want to sell. Then, if you go online, you see people advising you only to sell with the intention of re-entering the market when the crash is over. But here's why this doesn't work. You can't time the market, and when you think you can, you make two very risky assumptions. One is that you know when the market has hit the bottom and can exit at that moment. And the second is that you know when the market will start rising again and therefore you have to buy back in. Unless you have a magic lamp, there's no way to predict the future. A study conducted at the University of Michigan measured returns from 1963 to 2004 and found that 96% of positive returns during that period came from just 0.85% of trading days. One of the world's best stock analysts delved into this phenomenon and looked at a 10-year period from November 2005 to October 2015, analyzing data through various simulations. He concluded that if you miss the top 10 trading days in the market over 10 years, you would lose an average of 66% of the gains you would have had by staying in the market. In simple terms, the message is that when the market moves up, it moves very quickly. And if your money is on the sidelines, you risk missing some of the market's best days. So stop being afraid of the market and stop panicking. But what do you do when you're in a moment of panic and difficulty? Three words, dollar cost averaging. It's an investment strategy that involves buying a set amount of money's worth of stocks at predetermined intervals. For example, you invest $200 in Microsoft every single month for five years. If you invest a fixed sum each time you buy, you get more shares when the stock price is lower and fewer shares when the stock price is higher. Over time, this minimizes the average cost per share you pay for a given stock. Here's how it works. You have $300 to invest and you're looking at a very volatile stock. In the first month, the price is $10 per share. In the second month, it's $5. And in the third month, it's $20. This is where dollar cost averaging comes into play. You decide to invest $100 each month for three months. At the end of the three months, you will have bought 10 shares in the first month, 20 shares in the second month, and five shares in the third month. So, after three months, you will have 35 shares for $300 at an average price per share of $8.57. The price per share is not the cheapest because in the second month, it was Euro 5 per share, but it's also not the most expensive. In the third month, the shares were $20 each. Well, there are studies showing that in the long run, it might be more effective to invest all your money at once as a lump sum to get better returns. But during a recession or a market crash, there are many challenges and pitfalls, especially the psychological fear that grips people and prevents them from investing. This is why I personally believe that dollar cost averaging in volatility is a better option during a recession than lump sum investments. There's a study showing that during recessions, people who invested all their money at once in the stock market experienced a loss of 22.4%, while those who invested periodically only saw a loss of 17.6%. Now, a 5% difference in loss might not seem like much. But if you have $100,000 invested, that's about $5,000, which is enough to buy $5,001 McDonald's cheeseburgers. Regardless of your loss, what should you invest in? 
the simplest option for investing during a recession is a diversified index fund. However, not all stocks perform poorly during economic crises, and it's possible to identify those that might perform well. During the 2008 recession, certain stocks defied the downturn. For example, Dollar Tree saw an annual return of 60.8%, Walmart had a 20% return, and Ross, a low-cost clothing company, had a 17.6% gain. The healthcare sector was also a strong performer. While it's essential to cut unnecessary expenses during a recession, certain essential goods like food, clothing, healthcare and money management remain crucial. It's important to minimise overall expenses to maximise profits. Recessions are a natural part of the economic cycle, occurring more frequently than people realise. Since 1945, there have been around 10 recessions, lasting an average of 11 months. While markets eventually recover, proper money management is crucial before investing during a recession. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weekly investment tips. Leave a comment below. Happy investing!